Hey everybody, my name is Cap and welcome back to Cap Tech. If you've used a computer for any amount of time, you've probably heard the terms processes, applications, and services, most often associated with the task manager. But what's the difference between these? What do they actually do? Well, I thought I would break it down for you, try to make it as easy to understand as possible so you know what you're looking at. So let's start with applications. What is an application? Well, basically it's a program in which you actually start yourself and interact with within the Windows desktop environment. So this is gonna be anything from Office products to Internet Explorer or different browsers you use to iTunes, Skype, Word, Google Chrome, Adobe Reader, all of these sort of things that you can actually open and run and use the program. These are applications. These are the things you use every single day. So now what is a process? Well, a process is the actual file name that runs when you launch an application. So for instance, let's say you open up Google Chrome, the application. The file that it actually opens on your computer is chrome.exe. That is the executable that the Windows opens up and runs to allow Chrome to run. And as you can see within Chrome, you may have just the one application open and it can open up multiple processes and each one of those processes may do a different thing. So every time you open up a new tab or it has a different kind of plugin running in the background, those sort of things, it's going to open up a different process, which is a different version of the file running all at the same time while having only just the one application running. But on all applications, open up multiple versions of the same process here. So if you open up Microsoft Word, it's going to run the process winword.exe for the application Microsoft Word. But it doesn't matter how many different documents you open up, it's still only going to have just the basic winword.exe running. So now we come down to services, and these are just a little bit more complicated, but not entirely. A service is kind of like a process, and in a sense, it is a process, but it runs in the background, and it doesn't allow you to directly interact with it. When a service opens up, it doesn't open up its own window. There isn't something you can open up and click. It's running, but it's completely hidden in the background, and it usually always feeds directly into Windows itself so that it controls different things within Windows. And so, for instance, like if you are trying to print something here out of one of your applications, there's a service in the background called the print spooler service. This is always running. It starts as soon as you turn Windows on and it runs in the background to make sure whatever application you're using can access the hardware, aka the printer, and knows how to get it from A to B. So that service runs in the background. You don't ever see it. You don't ever interact with it, but it's what allows Windows to print to your hardware devices. Now there's some other notable differences between services and applications and processes. Like for instance, a service can start as soon as the Windows boots up automatically without having anyone even log in. So before it even gets to the desktop, as soon as you start Windows up, they start working in the background. Versus an application and some processes can only be accessed once the user logs in and sometimes even manually starts them on their own. And services will continue to run even if you log off the computer. As long as Windows is actually running on your system, all of those services continue to run in the background and perform a lot of different functions like maintaining your antivirus or checking for Windows updates or making sure that the clock on your computer is still right. All of those stay running regardless of what you do with the system unless you manually shut it down. And of course, then the next time you start it back up, it runs right like it normally does. And also services aren't really allowed to have a user interface, meaning an actual window you can click on and change some things. This is one of those decrees set by Microsoft a long time ago that they're not supposed to have them. That doesn't mean that that's always 100% true, but 99% of the time you're not gonna have a service that you can go in and have a configurable window without going in and managing the services independently. And this is of course to make sure that users don't accidentally change something. If you had a system critical service running in the system tray down there and they were trying to accidentally open up something and they closed it, they could cause system instability, cause data loss or some other problems. So by default and by ruling, services don't have a window and services don't have the system tray icon. They don't have something you can generally interact with. Now you can only have one instance of any service running at a time. You can't start more than one version of Print Spooler or Windows Update or the Windows Timekeeper. Only one can run at a time. You can start, stop, and restart it, but you can't create multiple instances of it. But you can have instances in where one process may control multiple services. 
like for instance the svchost.exe process for Windows, each one of those can control multiple services here. And the same thing can be said for one service might actually tie to more than one process out there. So you can have multiple processes that can start and stop the same services. And that just about wraps it up. The overall differences between applications, processes, and services. And hopefully this helped you understand the difference between those and what they actually do. So when you see them in future events or you're looking at the task manager, you kind of have a better understanding as to what you're looking at. But of course, if you have any questions, do drop them in the comment section down below and I'll happily answer them as quick as I can. If you would, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button at the bottom of the video here because I truly do appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you guys so much for your time. You have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later.